Good evening. <clears throat> we have a very interesting and curious topic to go into. Essentially, we're continuing with this theme, which is the way of the logos, its key logos. Spiritual logos is a spiritual path through the mind. And now we're bridging it into dreams. Now, how does that relate to dreams? Well, I'll make a couple of marks on a piece of paper. Because we're going to be covering quite a bit of ground. We could start with one question, which is, why Plato? Why Plato? Why go back to Plato? Let me give you the problem Socrates faces in the Republic. He's talking about two states of mind. One is the most luminous light of being, which is, of course, Sadikalpa Samadhi in Hindu terms. But we will call it what Plato calls it, the most brilliant light of being. He's discussing this fantastic experience into the nature of ultimate reality. <clears throat> and he says to his colleague Glaucon, by the way, This magnificent experience, which reveals the very nature of ultimate reality, really is a product of something called the good. He said, but I, it's so difficult to talk about the good. He said, I'll tell you what I can do. I'll talk about the idea of the good. Now, the word idea means to behold, so to behold the good is having this experience. So in Hindu terms, which perhaps a good number of you are familiar with, nirvikalpa, sadhikalpa, samadhi, similar in the Tibetan Book of the Dead, two states of mind, the archive, the archetypal experience that nearly everyone, of course, seeks and is challenged to understand. So as Plato goes through this and he explains it to Glaucon, Glaucon says, wow, this is you mean this came to birth through this? He said, yeah, 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 yeah. This came to birth this. He said, now to understand it is we have to unfold an analogy. And the analogy is, I'll take the lower part first, as the sun is to light. So too, the good itself, the ultimate, is to the most brilliant light of being, or divine luminosity. Four terminology. And they go back and forth exploring this rather amazing analogy because it's the sum total of philosophy and the spiritual life. And he says, look here, there's something important about this, you see. That means the nature of the appearances stands to the metaphysical region or realm as an analogy. There's something similar going on between the two. One is greater, one is lesser. Same dynamics. Therefore, the terms may vary, relationships are constant. So Glaucon says, wow, that's what I'm saying. How do you get a hold of that? He says, oh, 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 you get a hold of that? I'll tell you what you got to do. He says, you have to understand that to get into this experience. He said, you have to understand 
how the way the mind functions. That's what you have to do. You have to see how the mind functions. He says, don't let the mind function. He says, it operates on four levels. He says, you can engage in image thinking. Images dominate a good part of our mind, right? Image thinking. But image thinking has a source. And the source is some belief. And therefore, this gives birth to that. Ah, similar to what we were saying a moment ago. Yeah, yeah, relations are constant, terms vary. He said, now this is the everyday realm. He said, now if you want to get into something more profound in the nature of ultimate reality, he said, you have to leave this. And therefore, you have to get into something new called understanding. Now, we should put put brackets around it because what he means by it I would like to introduce to you because it's not what we normally consider understanding. He says, I'll tell you what understanding is in a moment. He says, by the way, you have to get to real knowing, right? pure knowing, where that is the experience of this is the object of knowledge. <clears throat> this is beyond knowledge. He said, this is an object of knowledge and you have to train your mind to perceive it and get that experience. By the way, watch now. All the ways you can bring yourself to understand that experience, all the ways in which you can understand it, and all the ideas that you may be able to infer coming out of this experience, all of that Here you are. Having this experience, you can infer many things about it. It's beauty itself. It's divine luminosity. It's something it truly is. All of these terms can be said to emerge from that experience. That and only that are objects of understanding. It has nothing to do with any other kind of understanding. So Glaucon says, hey, wait a minute, it's pretty heavy. Socrates, yeah, 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 well, you asked about it. He said, you know what, um, I'd like to see this a little better. Oh, yeah, okay, so I'll tell you what I'll do then. He said, I'll, uh, I'll create a story for you. And so he creates a allegory. The allegory of the cave in the upper world. He said, you know what, he said, most of us, you know where we live? We're caught up in images, and therefore, you know, we really are uh, creatures that live in a kind of a cave. And uh, we're chained and fettered, and all we can do is look forward, can't move our, eye, our heads around, therefore we don't know one another, we can only see the shadows bouncing on the wall. And these shadows come from the fact that there are some people walking back and forth carrying things on the top of their heads, and there's a fire behind them, and that luminosity then therefore bounces off the wall, and that produces the shadows. See that couple of guys over here, by the way, and they're talking to one another, and equally well, their voices echo off the walls, and therefore this is the total experience of someone who's ignorant. What do they do? They believe these shadows on the wall of the cave is the real things. And some get prizes for anticipating which one comes first and which comes second, and they give all kinds of laurel wreaths to people who can try to understand the shadows on the wall of the cave. But they never see, they can't free themselves, they're fettered, they're chained. So in terms of the story then, along comes someone, comes down, forces one of these people to answer questions that releases the chains and then they have to see one, the objects, right? The objects of the shadows, the leaves. They have to see what generated it, the fire. 
Then they have to be dragged upward into the everyday world, out of the everyday world into the world of the divine. He said, broken up in two parts. At first, it's difficult up here because it's dark and you have to get used to everything and, and it's very difficult to focus your mind. Said, but then, with experience, you then can see things and shiny objects such as surfaces or pools and things of that nature. He said, you know what? When you finally get really better off, you can see that these images that you've been looking at here, with true knowing, you can see what they really are. Therefore, this is the experience of knowing. Is this the cave, allegory of the cave? He says, you know what, hey, you know, if you get that vision, you get that vision, you're a philosopher. You know what you got to do then? You got to come back down. Oh, he said, let me say when you get back down. You just got to be careful, they might kill you. <laughs> you start telling them the truth about what they think is real in their everyday world, they're going to be so ticked off at you, they're going to kill you. He said, nonetheless, the reason you go back there is because now you can see the nature of appearance better than anyone be ever, ever could without this experience. Therefore, you truly know the nature of image thinking and the beliefs that produce them. So, Plowkin then goes one more step and he says, wait a minute, uh, how do you do this? Oh, I said, I have to do it. It's a one heck of a trip. So therefore he gives the education of the philosopher, right? Education of the philosopher. And it goes through several steps, which I, we will not have the time to go through it. If you'd like some time, we can do it. But it's a philosophical way of understanding arithmetic, geometry. These are now become states of mind to explore because he's using them as an analogy. Uh, solid geometry, astronomy, and of course harmony or music. He said, after you pull this off, he said, oh, these are just the preliminaries, because then you have to get ready for the dialectic. Why? He said, because the dialectic is the only thing that will take you, if you've experienced this, that's what truly is, that's reality, there's no question about it. He said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, if it, uh, if it truly exists, for anything that truly exists, it has to have a cause. And the cause is always superior to its effect. Therefore, you know what? As great as this is, this is an effect of this. This is the true cause. Therefore, it's through this kind of dialectic reasoning that can break a person out of this so they can then prepare themselves to be here. He said, well, that's not an easy task. So Socrates, yeah, well, that's true. Um, that's because, you see, he said, we, uh, we really are strange people, you see. Um, we come in the world. We come in the world with a view. We already come into the world with an idea of what we are. Now, I can draw that so you can see the person. All right, look at her. You come into the world with a particular destiny. Every person has a destiny. So. But the difficulty is, as you undoubtedly know, you then find yourself in one of these places called home. And the family are going to impose their beliefs on top of you and to try to get you to become a loyal member of the family, or the tribe, or the clan. And so they go through a very interesting process of indoctrination so that you pick up beliefs about yourself. And therefore, these beliefs about yourself, of course, as you undoubtedly can click into, are the very things we're talking about when we're talking about
the beliefs we pick up at home from our clan, from our family, that try to make us one of the loyal followers of whatever way of life they think is significant and important for us. These are the beliefs that we then bring together within ourselves, therefore we have two sets, a primary, what our destiny really is, and this thing which is what we should be, an image. Now, there are five ways in which, there are five kinds of families you can line up into, basically, right? Five kinds of families. And each one has a particular name, and they then bring whatever it is important within them, bang, and pile it on top of you, and that makes you. Okay, so uh, now we go into dreams. Oh, this is all about dreams, by the way. Then Plato says, you know, this is our condition. Therefore, if you want to get an insight into yourself, he said, the only way you can get an insight into yourself, there's only one way. Dreams. Book nine. Plato's Republic. He said, it's only in dreams that you can get the kind of information, knowledge, experience, that will give you an insight into the struggle of how you were indoctrinated to accept these beliefs, both from your society and your family. So it's through dreams then that awaken images of your past, present, and future, and provide visions, pure visions, or luminous experiences for those who are lucky enough to have them. So look here. All of this is what Plato describes as Socrates' logos. This is what it involves. What does it involve? If you want to understand yourself or the nature of the mind, he said, then you have to see that in your daily life, you have a goal, and you're going to pursue it. All right? The more personally meaningful that goal is, the greater the likelihood you're going to be stuck with a block. Why? Because, you see, you have this image of yourself that you don't know. These are unsuspected beliefs. Unsuspected beliefs about yourself. <clears throat> Not unconscious, unsuspected. Therefore, you go after your goal. However, you know that if you get your goal, that's going to change your view of yourself. And the whole nature of the dreams and uh, philosophy based upon a Platonic vision is this and this are incompatible. What does that mean? That means you have a dream. You're pursuing it. There have to be steps to reach it. Okay, as you struggle and could devote yourself to your goal, you run into a block. Why do you run into a block? Because if you achieve this goal, you're going to have to change your image of yourself, aren't you? Yes. Ah, that image that, you are, that accompanies the achievement of a personal, meaningful goal is going to be irreconcilable with the image that you have picked up from your family clan. And the other idea in here is also your destiny. Now, this part, destiny, is very important, okay? But I assure you we won't have time to do it. But uh, later we, we can do it, and you, if you're interested in doing it, what you have to do is read Plato's Myth of Earth, Myth of Reincarnation. And you'll see the doctrine of reincarnation is saying everything we just said in symbolic form. And it's a magnificent bit. Okay, put it under the table for later. All right, now look here. Therefore, if a dream 
It's going to be a allegory. Dreams are allegories. What is an allegory? Okay. A drama. The drama is going to have a basic functional analogy to it, just like in Plato's Allegory of the Day. It's going to have similes, states of mind, and metaphors. Because that's exactly what makes up an allegory. All right. A dream is an allegory. Therefore, one of the uh, most important elements of an allegory and a dream must have goals. Okay. All right. If it has goals, then you can see then in the dream what's happening as you then try to achieve your goal in your dream. Ah! Very similar to the picture I drew so well a few minutes ago. Right. Now look here. If it's an allegory, how does it fit the analogy? If dreams are meaningful. It has to have an impact on your present. It has to therefore answer one most important question is, why did you have the dream when you did? Therefore, the past 48 hours, most often, there's a relationship between these two that will then shape your future. So therefore, it's simple. What are we going to do? I'm going to ask if anyone has a dream, and we'll do it. The heck with talking. Let's do it. Anyone bring one in? Come on up. Now, did you sign that sheet of paper that said, under no circumstance will you be released? Blah, blah, blah. I'm Absolutely. joking. I'm joking. I signed joking. it. I signed it for everything. Thank you. How do you do? And your name? Cherise. Nice to see you. Cherise. Cherise. Hi. Hi. Pierre. Pierre. Right here. Right Let's up. go to work. Let's do it. Okay. Need a clean sheet of paper? Please. I mean, yes. well, I think yeah. so, yes. yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're not knocking the yard, I hope. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. Even oh, though all is, my figures are new. You're selling these as lithographs. Oh, yeah, yeah. All my figures are new. Oh, that's <laughs> a big selling <laughs> point. Oh, <laughs> Did you have by chance? Did you write it out? Or? Um, well, I, um, I I did what you recommended, which was record it and then um, oh, wonderful. You know, write it and then compare it. But now yeah. I have it all in my head. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. I'm but it's simple. Yeah. And it was last night. Oh, and, that's um, even better. I was driving up Beverly Boulevard. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Oh yeah, take yourself, make yourself. Ah. You might need to take yourself ah. off for this street. Ah. I usually wear Birkenstocks, yes, but I put on a clean pair tonight. You are so, so. wise. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> okay. Man. Do, do you want a seat or anything? Or no, okay, I we just are? want to help you out. With Thank you. Morning. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, right. but, but we just need a little path, and I just need a room for a nice circle. Okay. Go ahead. Um, this is Beverly Boulevard. What's the name of it? Um, oh, Beverly. Boulevard. Okay. Beverly Boulevard. 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 Right, right. And I'm driving this way west. I happen to be good at driving. I uh, happen to be driving. Drawing cars. <laughs> oh, good. And I'm good at driving, and I was driving. Okay, oh, wait a minute. And I was heading west. Of course. Before uh, Fairfax. But mm -hmm. my attention was diverted overhead. Your attention? My attention was diverted overhead. Wait a minute. Yeah, I'm driving this way. No, this way. Yeah, I know, but that's but yeah, you got to show my It's two dimensional, yeah, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm looking up, uh -huh. and it's a spacecraft that is in the exact shape of a circle. Of course. What can I tell? I know it seems of, very like cliche. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, okay. um, but it is uh, fatter than a typical spacecraft. It's like uh, chunkier than what you would expect to see. <laughs> <laughs> and um chunky circle chunky. she's got me on this one it's chunky okay. it's thick it's okay. like a, uh and and it's pretty big it's like i mean okay. seriously bigger than maybe about a black lung i like that Good. it comes over my car right on okay Go ahead. and it i don't know where it went that's fair and <laughs> so i got somewhere over here with some kind of dance hall, like this place, but a little bigger. And, um, what kind of place is it? 
kind of dance hall. Dance hall. We've had dances in okay, here. Okay, I'm, I'm going to join dance hall. And um, people are here, and you know, all kinds, all kinds of people like you, like just different people. Like I would talk to and get to know you, and um, and, and so all was fair game. I could talk to anybody about it. And I was trying to get a phone connection to say that I'd seen this extraterrestrial object in the sky, but I couldn't get through. And somebody in the group said, "That's the new airplane." No, 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 no. <laughs> what did I say? That was a new airplane. That was a new airplane. Okay, let me draw that first. Yeah, I don't know which one of you said it. Just to say, you know, that, that this is sort of like the group. A new airplane. Okay. I don't remember that person's face. That's good. Male or female? That's okay. Android. One of them. That's okay. <laughs> That's all I like, really no, no, cool. remember. Okay, good. We're finished. Thank you so much. Wait, 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 wait. We're not finished yet. Oh. That's where we're going. Similes and metaphors. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> Say, I like the train. Um, Thank you. Not that you have. No. What is simile again for that? A simile means what is it like? Right, right, okay. What is it like? Right. So, therefore, could you tell me, number one, what was it like driving along the boulevard going west? Well, what it felt it like, like the 1940s. There weren't that many cars, the way I love it. Okay, thank you. Not that I was born then. That's okay. But it, if I, I watched those movies. Okay, good, good, good. And then you looked up. <laughs> then I looked uh, up, yeah. What was it like when you saw the... I saw it coming, and it was smaller at a distance, and then when it got bigger, it was like, whoa! And that was it. Yeah, good. Uh, whoa! whoa! Go ahead. Whoa! But I didn't... Follow it or anything. Yep. I just yep. went and on my you, way. And, and then I. You washed it? You washed it? Not in my rearview mirror. No. Nope. No. I let it go. Okay. <coughs> uh, watch now, okay? Okay. Uh, three. I let it go. In every dream, there are three things you look for, all right? Uh, you look for the state of mind, that's called the simile. You look for an action taking place and the logos, right? Words, meaning, right? So we just got one. I'll let it go. I let it go. Okay, good. And then you then proceeded to the dance hall. I tried to report it like probably, you know, good citizen. Okay. What was it like in the dance hall when you're looking for the phone? Oh, wow. Well, there were like um, outdoor areas like out there. And there were people inside here, and then there was somebody at a screen over here. Um, he was, was there any sense of why you wanted the phone or use it? To tell about To tell about those. Oh. That's it. Oh, oh. So what was it like that you couldn't, couldn't get through? Couldn't find the phone. What was it like you couldn't get couldn't through? Couldn't get through. Well, just kept trying. I tried probably three different times. Look, kept trying. Come on. Kept trying. Yeah, what was that like? Um... I got a little distracted. A little distracted. Well, because the guy behind the screen over here, his dad has died. Okay. And he was looking at kids' pictures of him and his dad. So yeah. I got sad for a yeah. second. Yeah. Uh, what kind of a feeling state is that? Uh, um, empathy. Complete empathy. A complete empathy. Yeah, I ran. I ran empathy. Perfect. Right. Um, could you put other words on complete empathy? On the screen? Um, but that experience was... Uh, um, You're on the phone, right? You're trying to get through. Yeah, get and then through. I ran into that guy with the screen of his dad, this pictures yeah. of his family, and it was... Uh, he was um, mourning, and he just heard the news. Oh, he was trying to... Expect, he was expecting his dad any minute, and instead he found out that his dad died. And oh. so it wasn't just a, a death news, it was also a, a surprise. Now, that's very important. 
see, and reflecting, you now re re remember that part. That's right. Yeah, could you say it again then? Um, well, um, he didn't. He was expecting his dad, and he his dad didn't come. He was expecting his dad. And instead he found hold out. Hold it, hold it, which, wait, 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 because your words are important. Expecting his dad didn't come. Correct. And found out he died instead. And what did it do? What did you say? And then he was looking at a screen in private at an angle of some family no, what, pictures. What? I looked at it like that. Yeah. What effect did, you, did it have on you? You're watching him. My what? effect was... Uh, okay, there you are. You're watching him. What was it like? I witnessed his grief. Witnessed his grief. You have more? An integrated... Um, I don't know that word. Integrated. I, I, I felt like... Um, uh, the room had expanded and I got a bigger understanding of the space that I was holding with all those people, of me being in it. Like there was more going on. That's an interesting statement, isn't it? Thank you. Thank you. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, you're in the dance hall. In the dance room, one of the people there and there, remember before the phone call? What was that like? Just anything more? No. It was kind of like uh, the Hotel Cafe Alley, and it was a little bit just like a venue, like where you would perform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Everything we recorded is called the similar, right? That is to say, it's a statement, an interior statement about a person and an inner experience. Therefore, it's like something, that's what we call it a similar. All right, next. Everything in the dream, everything that is a furniture, an object, must represent something. And we'll go into that in a minute. That's taking a dream in terms of its metaphors. What's a metaphor? Anything in the dream that is an object must be there for a purpose. And therefore, when you then explore a dream, you want to uncork it. You want to discover what is behind it since it's a metaphor. All right? Okay. Now, now we want to go back and take a look at it. All right, look here. Uh, nice, interesting states of mind, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, um, would you say this in terms of what you were doing and the goal, uh, success or failure? Pretty good. Pretty well, good. success. Success, because you got through on the phone? No. No, no, okay, try it again. I woke up feeling okay? That's true, but in the, we're just interested in the dream. Oh, okay. The drama. The dream, the dream. success. Was there something you wanted? Failure. Failure. Right, right, right. right. Mm -hmm. um, do we want to know what does this mean? See, but we can't get to the word meaning until we unpack it a little bit more. Um, you notice there are two interesting states of mind here. Um, this wow state, watching flying saucer around, right? not saucer, cool, right? contrasted with this expanded, right? Uh, could you talk about the difference between them? What's that expanded again? Well, you said the room, the room, it was like you witnessed his grief and it was... Oh, in the room I kind of got like a bigger sense of, uh, I guess, the hidden compartments of the room. Uh, yeah, what would... What would that you? felt like I was connected. Ah, thank you. It felt like I was connected. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's an interesting state, isn't yeah. it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Is it possible that you've had that experience before being sense of being connected? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Right. Look here. Ten, one. Where would you put this? Connected? Ooh, top. Way up on top, right? Oh, so yeah. that's a, a yeah. very profound experience of something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, the wow. Uh, undoubtedly, you've experienced things you might call wow. Where would you put this one? Well, a wow would be like the last time I saw something like that, which was through my uh, bedroom wall. 
but there was no wall. And it, it crashed by the, uh, um, the uh, realty office. I like that. Do it again. <laughs> I, I like that. Oh. Try it. Do it. Try it. Go ahead. The last wow. Wow was when. Was when I saw a flying object like that through my bedroom wall, but there was no wall. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> what? <laughs> Gotta help me. Come on. Okay, so it, 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 I just saw it. There was the wall got invisible, and I saw this same kind of thing, yeah. but it crashed by the realty office. Yeah, when was and this? And that was a big wow. Yeah, yeah. When was this? <laughs> that was a couple of years ago. Oh, oh, oh. So this is another one like it. Bigger. Chunkier. Bigger. Only this is bigger. So therefore, where would you put it? This. Way yeah. up on top of these kinds of experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this okay. would be like right there. Yeah. 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 Two of them. Two. Two wowers. Okay. Thanks. I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't yeah. Slow you down there. Yeah. <laughs> Have you wanted to hear? Uh, you felt like you were connected. And here, what are you trying to do? <coughs> Get connected. Trying to communicate. Trying to Remember on the phone. Oh, on the phone. Oh, I'm trying to. Get yeah. Oh. So here, it was a success. Here, yes. Here. Yeah. No. No. Couldn't get connected. Right. What was that like? Oh, uh, that was typical. Typical you know, of what? Phones, you know, phones yeah. are just like trainer wheels for telepathy. Yeah. So they often go down. Oh. You know, they're just practice. That's true. Look here. Now we're going to get you in the dream now, okay? Um, you're in the dream and you're trying to get through on the phone. Um, remember? And you keep trying. Doesn't work. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Does it try again and again? Doesn't work. Mm -hmm. What's that like? Like nothing. Just like, uh, like, nothing. like I exist somewhere like a little pee in the back of my head. I just felt like I had to keep going, but I didn't really... My identity got like the side of the pee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like nothing. Nothing. Yeah, so I'll draw a picture of you. Like yeah, that's me. Right. And it's green. Yeah, that's okay. It's like green. A yeah, well, it's green. Like a pee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some some restaurants split them for soup, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Not quite that small. All right, all right. <laughs> And, uh, by the way, isn't that interesting that you're driving this car and it's like the scenes of the 1940s, mm -hmm. and even though you weren't around, what's that like? What, what's what like? Driving that on I was, the boulevard oh, what's the dream and like? it looks oh, like wonderful, 1940s. Wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Oh, uh, you can appreciate the architecture. Right, the architecture, all of that. Right, good, good, good. You breathe a little bit. No, breathing better. Yeah. Oh, no. That was a Enjoy that, yourself actually yeah. driving. That's when they had air in LA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, look here, see? Um, we can notice what, we're, what I'm asking you to do now. All right? mm -hmm. <clears throat> we have six things. And we kind of want to do this, see? And this is kind of normal. And I want to show you what I don't want you to help me with this, right? Okay. Uh, what we're calling scene three, that's the big wow at ten, right? Okay. So you could say that's where it is. Okay. All right? Right. And then you had uh, this great one, which is interesting indeed, uh, which was another ten. And um, that was connected, though, with this last scene that you recall, wasn't it? It's connected, so, yeah. Yeah, so. And then this failure at four. Yeah. Yeah, where would you put that? Oh, the failure? Like the... Uh, that area. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
The P, remember? Oh, the P. That's yeah, right. just yeah, like the real P. There, yeah. yeah, pretty down here, huh? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, it didn't seem to the wow. Because we were just looking at. Pardon? I'm sorry, forgive me. Uh, but scene two is the wow, not three. Oh, two. See? Oh, two. Yeah. Two is the wow. Stay there. Thanks for the yeah. 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 I got it. Don't go anywhere. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now we got four. Right, good. Three, good. let it go. And I three, let go. I let it go. That's what we're now looking at. Right, what was that like? Wow! And I let it go. It was like nothing. Huh? Just let it go. N nothing. I didn't feel obligated to follow it in my field no. of vision. No. no. You notice that you used the word nothing twice? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. Me too. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Funny. Three. What's that like? Fun. Nothing. Uh, yeah. It doesn't exist. It's like nothing. It's like nothing. Like Half a P. Like the pity? Pathogen. Like the pity? Ah, ah, ah. Split. Split. And we're saying that's number three. Okay. Well, then, look here. Ah, dance hall. That was just uh, nothing special until you got to the phone. Right. So, uh, it was dance hall number one, right? Oh, no. Five. Now, one, one is was one. wonderful. Right? Breathing, nice yeah. architecture. Where would you put that in terms of? Intensity and six. Six. Okay, right about right like here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So therefore, in terms of the levels of intensity, would you agree we can do this? Where's five? Interesting then that these nothingnesses uh, that brought you down, didn't it? It was a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. And that judgment that it's nothing. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of curious. That, that uh, judgment that was pretty in, in major experience of yours. Mm -hmm. And then, oh well, <laughs> I let it go, it's nothing. Huh. Yeah. What are you, what are you thinking of? Uh, good beginning. Neutrality? What'd you say? Good beginning? Well, just would you agree this is a very important experience? Wow! It was in the tenor. Yeah. Uh, I let it go. It's nothing. No, but I, I was wowed by it. But I didn't feel obligated to it. But I can't put that on the paper. Put the words on it, okay? I didn't feel obligated to it. Uh, for some reason, I didn't feel I had to continue to watch where it went. Like, I didn't need to know its destination. Would you agree, though, it was an object for you to try to communicate it to someone else? Yeah. Yeah, what do you think of that? Hmm. 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 I don't know. Neither do I. Danny, what do you think? No, 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 no. Just <laughs> <laughs> I let it go. Nothing. Oh, hey, I tried to catch Hey, hey, hey. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Didn't work. Felt terrible. Hmm. Does it look like when, you, it go when you called it nothing, it was something? It was something. So nothing is something in my mind. And you're, language. yeah, but what does it do to you in the dream? You let it go? Not obligated to nothing? Is that curious? Uh, brainwashed. Yeah, it's kind of brainwashed. Yeah. Something that would happens to be good, really good. good. And then they just like go up. Ah. 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 Yeah, do it again. Ah. Ah. Yeah, what you going to do? So I'm missing really good things. Yeah. And By judging it. Judging it. As. Eh. Yeah, yeah, do it again. Yeah. Eh. Right. See? See yeah, the gesture that goes right. with it? No, no. See the gesture oh, yeah. that goes with it? It's got a whole body language. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. 
where did you pick that up? Shirley Temple. No. <laughs> no. Good old Shirley comes back. Oh. She and I went to different schools. <laughs> oh, yeah. We were kind of related. Her mother and my mother were both mothers, so we kind of... Yeah, yeah I think they Shirley, can you give me that image? Shirley, tell come on. Yeah, Shirley, tell Come on, go ahead. Just, um, okay. Just maybe being cavalier about life to overboard. Missing important things, because I'm just... Just... There it is. There it is. Yeah, this is like... The hands and everything. Yeah, this is like whole, acting. Yeah. You know, uh, mm -hmm. It kind of um, does something to that wow, doesn't it? Right, it's acting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where do you feel it when you feel it? Like now, you're doing it, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're feeling it right now. What's it like now? Well, I feel in the summer of my head. Yeah, like what? Um, I feel like a mindfulness coming in, like really, like uh, big. Uh huh. It's like my head starting to get like really full. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I feel like crying a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Because you lost something. Treated as something. I lost something. Right. Yeah. 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 Huh. And I didn't woke up feeling like I, nothing really happened. I couldn't figure out what. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, it carried, <laughs> nothing carried. <laughs> nothing carried. Nothing carried the carried day. Carried through the way exactly, yeah. and then yeah. the day started out with nothing. <laughs> about right. Okay. This is how dream analysis now moves into philosophical midwifery. All right. Philosophical midwifery now includes dreams. Why? Okay? Now watch, okay? This curious thing called <coughs> philosophical midwifery gets its name because Socrates' mother was a midwife and she had the reputation of being able to spot a woman who was pregnant in the earliest stages knew all the difficulties she would go through, all the labor she would go through, could assist her in the birth of the child, could then not only do that, but judge whether it was a true and noble birth or not, and could also, by the way, curiously enough, and he kind of laughed and chuckled at this one, uh, the, his brother was also good at linking men and women together so they could produce the best child and have the best family. He said, we don't like mentioning that because, you know, there's a name, popular name, that give to someone who does that, which in Greek is pimpo. Yeah. I don't know whether you're familiar with that slang expression or not, but you may. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay, liquor. Now, we're not going to explore the philosophical midwifery, but if we did, this is what we would do. Right? See the state? It got very close to crying in the moment. Yeah. Right? We would ask, what is the history in your life of the repetition of this state? So we're looking now, here's your history. When did this state occur in your life? That's what we're looking for, the history of this kind of state of mind. And we want to see the effect it had on what was going on around you. So when we get the person to explore their personal world for similarities with this state of mind, then we can ask them right at the right time. We can ask the important question, which is, is it possible that you have a recollection of this same state of mind when you were young, living at home? Sure. How old were you when you first experienced that? Thirteen? Uh, no. Eight. Three. Three. I love it. If we were going, I don't know whether you're open to exploring something as personal sure, or not. Sure, I'm What? Sure. Okay, okay. Um, so, uh, interesting state you were experiencing at three years old. Can you tell us uh, uh, what was going on? Um... My uh, knees, I think my knees started to swell up a little bit. Okay, I can do that. Yeah, and um, my 
mom and my my mom was worried. My mom was worried. Right. Come on. And and, and right. my mom and dad would fight a lot. You know, they argued a lot. Your mother and dad fought a lot. Okay. But they're they're. Was she present? That was like something going on. At okay, that time. okay, 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 okay. They thought I was hitting the wall when I slept, when I was sleeping at night. Okay, okay. okay. Now your knees were hurting you. Go mm -hmm. ahead. And then what happened? Then I think I internalized. I think I internalized the upset in the house. Yeah, impossible. But just, uh, you're three years old, and there they are. She's looking at you, and she's worried. Go ahead. And what happened? I felt um, like I was upsetting them. Go ahead. And I, I wanted everything to be OK. Uh -huh. So, I guess I acted like everything was okay. Uh, keep going with the same. And then I had a lot of night terrors, though. You got what? I had a lot of night terrors. Night terrors that would wake up and talk in my sleep and not remember it the next day. Yeah, okay, I'm good at drawing those. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so. Before the sleep now, what if, can you recall anything more going on? No. No, no. It's like it's all black. You had to make an interesting decision there, didn't you? Mm -hmm. What was the decision? Your knees are hurting you. You thought you were upsetting them. I wanted everybody to get along. I wanted everybody to get along. Yeah. I still do. No. Uh -huh. So what did you decide to do? I guess I act like Shirley Temple. What? I act like Shirley Temple? By the way, did she uh, have any knowledge that your knees were hurting? Yeah. Oh, she knew that? Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, that's why they were worried. She was worried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she knew. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what do you make of this now? I don't know. Now, well, it's just like, so you have to reflect on it. Right? Say, so, wait a minute. Uh, what did she do after you gave the picture that everything was okay? I'm afraid then I got sicker. And then they got to put me in the hospital. <laughs> so you started worrying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I got really sick. And yeah. then I used to put, cry, cry, put myself to sleep crying, and then I had to go to the yeah, hospital. Yeah, cry yourself to sleep. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, there your knees are hurting. Mm -hmm. She knows that. And you want everything to be okay. You didn't want to upset them. So what did you do? Well, I would beg them to not get divorced. You what? I would beg them to not get divorced. At this moment, then? I would, I would, yeah. Well, at, all through this period, like three to seven, I would do that. It was like, it's like it's all merged there. Yeah. By the way, uh, what happened? You remember the pain in your leg, your knees? Uh -huh. And what did you turn it into? Uh, what did I turn it into? I don't know. I'm, in, uh, oh. I don't, I'm worried about your knees. What did I, like, oh, what what I turn it into? Well, then, um, like, a did you, sickness? Well, I don't know. I kind of got sick. I had to go to the hospital, and then I had, like, they didn't know what was wrong with me. They thought I had rheumatoid arthritis. But then, yeah, but then you know. What I'd like to do, though, is not deal with the implications of this, just stay with this. See? Okay. I don't want to deal with it either. I just want to deal with what that is. Do not. So what is your question again? Just what followed. 
would follow, like, yeah. like when, like right away, or? Yeah. Watch, uh-huh. Watch, do it again. So your knees are hurting. Mm -hmm. You know your mother knows. Mm -hmm. They've been arguing, right? Yeah. You didn't want to upset them. So what, what happened then? Besides, um, oh, I know. I know what happened next. Um, I started, uh, that was when I got clairvoyant. That's when you? I got clairvoyant. I would travel and fly, and I would be able to watch all kinds of movie pictures, and I opened up this thing in my head. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. That was after this. Right, oh, right uh, Right here? here? Right in there. In this here. So the head thing happened. I started to feel again. Then, then you started seeing things, movies. Yes. Yeah. Right. Movies. Movies. Does it work? Right. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Oh, what happened to the pain in your arms? Well, got the movie. it got kind of yeah. No, no. no. The movies were good. That was the good part. Then I, I just, I was sick for a while, and then I got better. Yeah. By the way, um, if I'm, what do you think of your, what your mother's doing? What would you call what she's doing? Worrying. Remember, she's worrying, and then she watches you get into this movie kind of stuff. No, she didn't know about it. She didn't know. Okay, so this is private. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay. So what does she do with her word? She did what? Bridge clubs. She closed down? Bridge clubs. Bri bridge. She had a lot of bridge clubs. She had played a lot of bridge. Oh, like San Francisco bridge? No, like cars. Oh, oh okay. Okay, try it now. Okay. She's really worried. So it's a good time to play bridge. You got it? What name are we going to call her for what she's doing? No. Maybe. <laughs> well, I was just wondering. Oh, yeah, because you know what else happened? I'd she like always would read billboards if, if we were going to ask her anything serious, and then in the car she would read the billboard and not answer it. Hey, remember the term you used a moment ago? How would she treat all of that pain and worry? And, uh, as if it was what? Nothing. Oh. <coughs> Oh, my dad. She, oh. How oh, is she yeah, treating yeah, yeah, yeah. your suffering? Well, they, I can't say that, but, but, well, you, but you can? they didn't know what to do about it, oh, so they dumb. carried on. They're stupid. <laughs> no. Maybe. No. <laughs> no way. <laughs> they left me to the doctors. Yeah, they should have. They did, and the doctors when? didn't know what they were doing. When? Right away, or did she go play bridge? Come on. <laughs> Together. You see, now we're using this word nothing, see? but we do not want to force it. But if she then, with all of this worry, turns away. Yeah. Well, she liked to have a good time. Well, who's having a difficult time? You? No, she had a good time. She liked to have a good time. Yeah, she liked to have a good time. And you have the worries with your knees, right? And she's worried, so she's going to play bridge. I did. <coughs> How is she treating your? I don't know. She didn't know what to do. She didn't know what to do. No. Okay. She did what she could. Yeah, because she's stupid. No. No, she's not. What do you mean she doesn't know what to do? You don't have to be a doctor or a lawyer. Well, or no, I didn't know what to do. Doctors didn't know what to do either. Well, what? Well, then how did she treat it? As if it's what? Nothing. Say, by the way, did she ever relate to you as if it were something, anything? Well, sure, she acknowledges that, yeah, the when I, that, when she got older. Oh, when she got older, like she didn't 80. acknowledge. How long did she have to wait? <laughs> 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 you know, <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> well, then she 
had more pain. Oh, and she had more she, pain than she, she could relate to it. Ah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty interesting? Okay. Yeah, what do you find yes. interesting about it? Well, if you, if you don't know what to do, I guess you do nothing. No, no. If you don't know what to do, call on help. Call, but then... Yeah, get help. <laughs> if you don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> like on your phone call, in your dream. Yeah, phone call. Yeah. Crazy. And then you don't get any help anyway. Yeah. Okay, but then what? How come you don't get any help? So, uh, <clears throat> if we could get to see her state of mind at this moment, it would be very helpful because then we could ask a couple okay. of questions. So okay. She's, look at it. She's seizure in it, right? Yes. Right? You don't want to upset them. No. But you got pain. She, already she knows upset. it. They're already upset. They're already upset. Because of this war between them. Yeah, they're just... Yeah. Yes or no? That's hard, yes. No, okay. They're already upset. Okay, look at it. And now you're coming upset, and now they have a decision to make. Mm -hmm. Which upset are they going to deal with? Mm -hmm. Which? There's yours. So it's not a theoretical question. In theirs. that three-year-old scene, we want to capture what she's doing. It's theirs. Theirs. They're upset. Yeah. Yeah. They had to deal with their upset. They had to deal with their... Yeah. yeah. So you treated your own as if it was what? Nothing, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. Better than my sister, though. They used to... Doctors told them to close the door if she cried. Well, that's a good doctor. <laughs> so I get your doctor. <laughs> I'll, trade you, doctors. I'll trade you for mine. <laughs> they, changed, they changed doctors. Okay. I had it better. Yeah, okay. okay. Question, okay? Mm -hmm. This experience of nothing, all right, what role has it played in your life, especially after something significant has played a role in your life? Uh-huh. And could this be where you learned it? To yeah. bury your own? Celebration. Treat it like nothing. Right. Big uh, uh, yeah. wows. I mean, yeah. uh -huh. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. We had a good time. Good time. Great time. Right? Thanks that's, so much. That's dream work. Yeah, that was fabulous. You think something of it? I or got a nothing? lot out of it. I got so much out of it, I'm going to be just processing for... So you're going to be another Plato. Yes, I'm, uh, yes. Yeah, you're in. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> okay, go back now. Look here. What do dreams do? We're saying, Plato says, dreams are going to throw light on your present. It's going to throw light on your past, and it's going to prepare you with the freedom to move forward into your future. But the things we have learned, you don't know that you have learned until you then surface them. Now, I'm what is called philosophical midwifery. And let me tell you how I came to this idea of using dreams. I have been working with people for some years with this model. People had a difficulty achieving some goal, practical goals, would have a talk and would get where they're stuck and would get the state of mind where they're stuck and would go through an analysis and try to figure out why they were blocked the way they were blocked. And so a good number of them then went on and achieved their goal. There's a problem, you see. I got disgusted with this. Because even though people have important practical goals, I didn't see 
that they were moving in a philosophical or philosophically spiritual way that it was of any significance. And so while this was handy and worthwhile to do, I didn't think much of it. But uh, I had in my own life some great dreams, especially July 22nd, 1955. That's when I was born. <laughs> and and all during all of my work, I would always make notes of my own dreams. And then one day I said to myself, what's going on? Don't do this. Don't do this anymore. Unless this goal, unless this goal is not practical, but a personal meaningful experience. It has to be personally meaningful. Intellectually, spiritually significant. Why? Because then when you look at dreams, you discover something most important. You see, what we inherited, we came into this world with our own destiny, right? We don't know what that is. You can get caught up and achieve all kinds of things. It's not even important in the slightest bit if you're not manifesting the destiny you came into this world with. So therefore, I spent a good deal of time now, like we just did, and um, saying, wait a minute. Is it possible then, by looking at dreams, the dream itself will criticize this and say, hey, you know what, you're doing the wrong thing. Let me put it another way. If someone has all kinds of goals, spiritual goals as well, they might go into yoga, they may go into any spiritual system. How do they know, how do they know that's the right system to be in? Could it be that they choose one that fits their problem? some image they have of themselves that isn't real? How can you tell whether or not the path you're taking is genuine and fits you and your own destiny? That's when dream work becomes most important and central to someone's existence because that will be the subject of your dream. Once you know that that's possible, your mind will cooperate with you and present you with all the material you need for your own growth. Not easy. Yeah. You know, um, I've been doing dream work for some time, and it's been remarkable. In terms Pardon? Of, I've been doing dream work for some time to inform my path, and it's been really remarkable. But I've had the good fortune of doing it with someone who's pretty, pretty masterful. But so many people out there that are sort of on the wrong track and, and don't have the access to people who really are, are very, very highly skilled at nav helping them navigate that dream world, you know, it's almost like, what do they do? I'm not sure I get the fullness of your question, so let me give it back to you in a different way. What would you say about, is it possible that we could get kids who have been sexually abused and they're in institutions because they're dangerous to themselves and society, is it possible that these people with such a low profile and low education could ever respond to this kind of work we have here? I'd like to introduce you to Regina Liana, who is using this kind of approach in her own work with people just like I just described, and she's doing brilliantly with those people. What you really need is not a depth of learning. You have to listen to people, respect them for what they are, and help them with the goals they want. But you know what they want? They want to get back here. They want to know, not these artificial goals, money, cars, degrees, and that nonsense. But what's most meaningful to their own soul? I'd like to go into that, but that's the myth of her, and I will take us another two hours, and I'm probably running beyond the time at this point anyhow. So, <laughs> sir? Just can you explain, the latter, can you explain what philosophical midwifery is? It's about the birthing of the soul. Philosophical midwifery now, please. This work, but now central to it, is the exploration of dreams that will then reveal the true nature of their problem. 
and when it's connected with their daydreams. That's what we do. We connect daydreams, connect them with dreams, and you can see how one plays with the other, and they come together in a most meaningful, synergistic fashion. And, and you would say that Socrates said that that was, also, that, that was a technique of, he, like his mother, he could see people's souls and help them birth the truth of their soul. Is that correct in that Yes, yes or no. See, that, I'll tell you why. I'll try to... Uh, <clears throat> Plato is not Homer. Everything I put here about dream work and the drama of a person's psyche is all an exact mirror image that you can find in Homer's Iliad. Homer's Iliad is a perfect example of philosophical midwifery. Achilles is the worst possible person in Greek society. Worst person. <laughs> the whole book is to show you how he can see the nature of his problem, how he can bring together the roots of his problem, so he can then challenge himself and break out of it, and then become what he was destiny was to be, which was to be a great warrior in the Trojan War. Plato doesn't do that. Plato's doing something else. Plato takes his view of what, how do you explain someone who is ideally the most perfect person, the true philosopher king. That's the Republic. He doesn't deal with what happens if you make mistakes, if you can't achieve your goal, you fall. He doesn't deal with this. Homer does. Plato doesn't. And... Uh, that's what, by the way, for a thousand years, people used to write essays on Homer's Iliad. Allegories, major study. No more, of course, because uh, something happened called the Dark Ages. They weren't dark for some of my ancestors, by the way. They were barbarians who probably helped sack Rome. Thank you. Any questions? Question? Thank you. And right now, thank you. Any more questions? I need something to drink. Uh, One quick announcement.